your name be glorified. Jesus, Buddha, my Lord, let your name be glorified. I give you glory. I give you glory. Praise the Lord. Welcome back to UK World Evangelism Church. My name is Bishop Simon. I am excited to come to you wherever you are. Remember that in the realm of the Spirit, there is no distance. The only connection we have is faith in God, faith in His works, faith in His ability and power, and faith in His faithfulness. God is faithful, trustworthy, dependable. I'm speaking about the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, and the God of Israel. The God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's the one I'm talking about. Because many people have many gods attached to them. There are places where the people have million gods. But I'm talking about the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of Israel, the God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Blessed One. Hallelujah. Wherever you are, I want to let you know this is your moment and your chance for a miracle, a breakthrough. This is an opportunity for you to have an experience with God. I will speak as God has given me utterance. I will speak according to the grace that has been bestowed upon me by God as a voice to the nations, displaying his wisdom, his power, and a witness that Jesus Christ is the Son of God who rose from the dead, victorious, and through faith in his name, salvation comes. Hallelujah. Wherever you are, Whatever situation you find yourself in, God is able. For with God, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. I'm going to lead us into a worship session. Then I'll come back and bring the word of God to us. As we hear the word of God, as we worship together, we have created an atmosphere for God to come into our place into where we are, into the bedroom where you are, in, into the hospital room where you are, into the place where you are sick. If we allow our faith to receive his word, we invite him into our place, then miracles, signs, and wonders become possible. Are you ready? Let's worship, and then I'll come back to you in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. 
your hands and begin to praise him. Praise the Lord. Welcome back to UK praise World Evangelism. God. Church, I'm excited. Jesus Christ is our hiding place. We have no other place to hide. He is our protection. The Bible said the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and they are saved. Hallelujah. The Bible said that those that put their trust in Jesus, they are like Mount Zion, which cannot be. Akabar overrun. Mama Mahanda. As the mountains surround Jerusalem, so the Lord surround those. I want you to put your trust in the Lord, confidence in the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Precious Father, I lift my hands in surrender to your will, your plan, and your purpose for my life. I trust you, Almighty God, because you called me. You separated me from my mother's womb that I may serve you. Lord, here I am. Let your will be done now, O God. Let your plan and purpose concerning me be made manifest. You set me apart for the ministry of your word. Anoint me and use me. Lord, those that hear the sound of my voice, let them hear your voice. Holy Spirit, come, take your place. Move me in the direction. Speak through me. Manifest the glory of the Father through me. Confirm Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior through the witness that we bear of him. Lord, touch the life of those that hear us. Touch those right now that are hearing the sound of our voice. Let your spirit invade their space to give them life, miracles, signs, and wonder. Oh, Lord. Help them that hear us as we preach right now, O oh God. Confirm your word with miracles, signs, and wonder. And let your glory be made manifest all over the earth, east, west, north, and south, the four corners of the earth, wherever this word will reach, Almighty oh God. Let your power be revealed. Let your glory be made manifest. Thank you, precious Father. Thank you, Lord God Almighty. Thank you for what you're about to do right now, O oh God. We give you glory. In Jesus' mighty name, I have prayed. Amen. Wherever you are, the stage is set. All you need is to open your heart and believe in the word of God. Praise God Almighty. Father, have your way. I'm excited. <laughs> I'm excited. Praise God Almighty. Praise God Almighty. Mm. I want to share on this word the Lord put in my spirit. The Lord wants us to fight the good fight of faith. There is a good fight and there is a wrong or bad fight. When you fight according to the rules of the game, when you fight according to the prescribed status, when you fight according to the weapon that is given, when you fight following your commander, obeying the commander's instruction, and you are fighting a good fight. It is required of us to fight a good fight. Praise God. And the fight we fight, you need to know the fight you are fighting and who you are fighting. You need to know. Because many people fight everybody. You fight your husband, you fight your wife, you fight your children, you fight members of your church, you fight your community, you fight everybody. You need to know the fight you have been invited to fight. You need to use the weapon you have been given to fight. I love where the scripture says that the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal, but they are mighty through God for the pulling down of every stronghold and everything that will exalt itself against the knowledge of God. One of the fights we fight is a fight of ignorance. Many are ignorant of the fight they are involved in. So they fight anyhow. They fight everybody. Even what they are not supposed to fight. The Bible said that for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So we are not in a battle with any flesh or any blood. Remember that. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. Oh, glory to God. So fight a good fight. If you don't know the fight you're fighting, you will fight everybody. And you will injure yourself. I have met believers that are in trouble. Believers. And it breaks my heart. 
when I see them. Because they are fighting, but they're wrong fight. They are fighting, but they're wrong person. They are fighting with lack of knowledge. The Bible said that my people are destroyed for their lack of knowledge. You need to fight with knowledge, godly knowledge. People don't even know the Bible describes that there is what is called earthly wisdom and heavenly wisdom. Don't allow your life to be surrounded with earthly wisdom in the battles of God, in the battles of your faith. You must allow heavenly wisdom. And that wisdom is a wisdom revealed by the word of God, revealed through experience working with God. Fight a good fight of faith. Let's read this scripture from the book of First Timothy. I'm reading from chapter 6 from verse 11. I'm interested in, in verse 12, but let's read from verse 11. He said, But you, O man of God, flee these things and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, gentleness, Fight the good fight of faith. You hear that? Fight the good fight of faith. Remember, there is a good fight. And it's a fight of faith. There is a fight that is not of good nature. Fighting flesh and blood is not prescribed by God. Fight the good fight of faith. Faith is based on the word of God. Faith is the result of the word of God. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. When your fight is based on the revelation and the knowledge of God, you are fighting a good fight. But when you are fighting because this person caused me to be offended, this person did this to me, this person did that to me, and you allow the poison of unbelief and doubt to poison your heart, you allow the poison of unforgiveness, bitterness, anger, and rivalry and contention. You allow those things to clog your heart and then you are praying. Your prayer is like witchcraft. When you are filled with bitterness, anger, unforgiveness, rivalry, contention, when you are using that foundation as a basis of you fighting, you are not fighting a good fight. But the scripture says to us, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, make your request known unto God, and the God of peace will guard your heart through Christ Jesus. So you, you, for you to fight a good fight, you need to fight according to the standard of God. If you do not fight according to the standard of God, you are a worldly person. You may be going to church, you may call yourself an unbeliever, but your fight will be futile. It will be unfruitful. You will not have victory. Also, you remember that in the book of Timothy, Paul was also writing. In the second Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 2, he said, You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses, commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engage in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of, life, of this life, that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. And also, if anyone competes in athletics, he is not crowned unless he competes according to the rules. <laughs> no one involved in warfare, athletics, any adventure. If you do not compete according to the rules, you are not crowned. So, we are called to fight a good fight of faith. And the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, meaning that they are not fleshly weapons. They are not envy. They are not anger. They are not unforgiveness. They are not bitterness. They are not doubt. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty. 
So the fight I fight is that fight of faith through Jesus Christ who died for me and rose again. Ooh, so that's the calling that we've been called. <laughs> fight a good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life to which you were also called and have confessed the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. I urge you in the sight of God who gives life to all things and before Jesus Christ who witnessed the good confession before Pontius Pilate. Remember that Jesus did not deny himself when Pilate was asking him questions. Pilate interrogated him. Pilate whipped him. The Pilate led Jesus to be punished so that he can change his confession. But he never changed his confession. That's fight. Many of us change our confession in the midst of adversity, in the midst of trouble, in the midst of worry and anxiety. We begin to act like people who don't even know Jesus Christ. We behave like carnal people. We behave like people who don't go to church. Jesus did not change his confession. That is fighting the good fight. A true warrior of Jesus Christ, you are ready in season and out of season. Nothing changes your confession. You know whom you are. As Paul writes in the scripture, says, I know whom I have believed. I know that he is able. Oh, shalom and he is what? Able to keep that which I have entrusted in his hands against that day. He never changed his confession. In the book of 2 Corinthians, Paul was writing, he says that, you know, I have a thorn in my flesh. And three times I besought the Lord that it may be removed out of me. But the Lord looked at me and said to me, Paul, my grace is sufficient for you. And Paul began to write, he says that, now I have discovered that when I am weak, his grace is made perfect in my weakness. Did you hear that? When we are weak, when we think we have no strength, but we are holding on to the Lord, holding on to the name of the Lord, holding on to the blood of Jesus, holding on to the promised word of God, God will surely show up to deliver us, to protect us, to preserve us, and to help us in our journey of life. He cannot deny himself. He cannot deny his word. God is faithful to his word. And God is faithful to the one that believes in his word. So fight the good fight of faith. Meaning, don't let any circumstances, don't let any situation cause you to change your course. Refuse to be afraid of the natural issues of life. Put your trust and confidence in the Lord and in his word, which faileth not. Do you believe that God can heal you from your sickness? It's a fight you have to deal with. It's a fight of faith. Do you believe that God can protect you in your journey of life? That's a fight of faith. Do you trust God to preserve you and to lead you from the beginning to the end of your life and help you to achieve the things he has already proposed for you? Do you believe it? That's a fight. I am not moved by what I see. I am not moved by what I hear. I am not moved by what I feel. I am not moved by what is happening around me. I am moved by faith in Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior, who died for me on the cross of Calvary, who promised I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I will be with you always, even till the end of time. I have confidence in that promise. I have confidence that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And every tongue that will rise up against me in judgment, I have the power and authority to condemn it. Fight a good fight of faith. Put your trust in the Lord. Remind yourself of his promises for with long life. He will satisfy me and show me his goodness in the land of the living. Wherever you are, I pray for you. And my prayer is every doubt the enemy has put in your heart, 
I release the fire of God to melt it like wax and let it fizzle out of your mind, your spirit, and your soul. I destroy every yoke of doubt. I destroy unbelief. I destroy those things that stand against you in manifesting the faith that God has given to you. I pray that the eyes of your understanding will be enlightened, that you may take hold of that which Christ has taken hold of you. For greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. God has not given you the spirit of fear, but he has given you the spirit of love, power, and sound mind. Therefore, you create an environment of God, and wherever you are going, you are going with that environment. You are anointed of God. You are thinking of God. You are perceiving God. So his glory is a shield around you. His favor is a shield around you that nothing formed against you will have the power to prosper. You rule and you reign in the face of life. You move from one end to the end, reaching your destination. Father, I pray for your children. I pray, oh God, that you will send more knowledge and understanding, that you will enlighten us, that you will allow us more grace, oh God, to stand, for we are under attack. The church is under attack. Your people are afraid of death. They're afraid. They're afraid of things. They're afraid of the news. They're afraid of circumstances. They're afraid of the things they're hearing. They have no more confidence in you, as, in you as their security. Father, deliver us from fear. Deliver us, oh God, from doubt. Deliver us from unbelief. Wherever you are, the Lord wants you to fight a good fight of faith. Karabanda, I am moved by what I believe God has promised. I am moved by what I believe God has said. I am moved by the testimony of others that have gone ahead of us. Karabanda Shire. Paul said, I know whom I have believed. He is able to keep that for which I have trusted in his hands. Do you know who you have believed? Did you believe in man or did you believe in Jesus? Did you believe in his word or did you believe in the sayings of men? If you believe in Jesus, he is able to keep that which you entrust in his hands, your life, your, 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 the supply for your sustenance, provision and protection in your going out and your coming in. Because God, the one we serve, is faithful, the God of Abraham. He is faithful. He is not the son of a man that he will repent. He is not the son of a man that he will shy away. Whatever he has promised, he is able to do it. Do you trust him? Fight a good fight of faith. Stand firm and reject fear. Stand firm and reject worry and anxiety. Stand firm and let go bitterness, unforgiveness. Let go anything that stands in the way that will hinder you. Let them go. Stand embracing Jesus Christ and loving him day by day. And you can now join me and sing, you are my hiding place. Hallelujah. You are my hiding place. Jesus is our hiding place. We have run into him and we are safe. Where is your faith? Where is your faith? Now, if you have this faith we are talking about, now you fight a good fight of faith. Confront issues that surround you and want to stop you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I'm going to take a short break and I come back to you. God bless you.
Welcome back to UK World Evangelism Church. I'm excited. What is our subject? Fight a good fight of faith. Meaning, put your trust in God. Have confidence in the promise of His word. And by it, day by day, do exploit. Overcome evil with good. Forgive those that offend you. Refuse to be offended. Rejoice in the Lord always. Set your mind on the things above, not on the things here on earth. Don't allow greediness and covetousness to cloud your heart and by so produce a poison, a spiritual poison that will weaken you and sometimes even bring sickness. Live a life like a bird, free. A day is sufficient. These are things that are really a fight to stay in this condition. It's not easy to maintain this condition. That's the real fight. The fight is not the person you're seeing with your naked eyes, what he said or what he did against you. Those are not the real fight. The fight is for you to keep yourself pure on a daily basis, pleasing the Lord. Keeping yourself what? Pure on a daily basis, pleasing the Lord, not pleasing yourself. Because you've been purchased, you are a purchased possession. You no longer own yourself. The Lord owns you. He bought you with his precious blood. And your life is to please him on a daily basis. If you will do that, you have provided yourself a defense and protection that the enemy cannot invade. If the devil is going to overcome you or invade you, you must have somebody he is arguing, causing offense discussion, bitterness, anger, unforgiveness, rivalry, covetousness, greediness, all this work of the flesh. As long as the work of the flesh surround your life, you will not please the Lord. Your heart will be poisoned. You will not be able to produce the joy of the Lord. For the Bible said, the joy of the Lord is my strength. When you are weak, you cannot fight, brother. When you are weak, you cannot defend yourself. Because you, you have lowered your defenses. You have removed your defenses by the works of the flesh. Galatians tells you what are the works of the flesh. And the foolish part of this is that when you open the door for the works of the flesh, you attract demons because they thrive in that place. Their instrument is the work of the flesh. The devil's instrument is the work of the flesh. He says to you, oh, this person said this against you. This person talked about you. This person argued against you. This person, he will, and as long as your mind is clogged in that, you will never have a sound mind. You, have not, you won't have a clear mind. You will not have a free heart to be able to praise God. Not knowing that. When you lift your voice with a pure heart to praise God, all your enemies will begin to tremble around. You don't know that. So every day we are binding the devil. <laughs> I laugh to myself. People are binding the devil. It's you that you are binding. You are binding yourself because you are living a life of the flesh. The devil dwells in the flesh. He walks in the flesh. He uses the weapons of the flesh. But the weapons of our warfare, they are not flesh. They are not carnal. The weapons of our warfare are what mighty through God. What is it? Love gentleness, meekness, forbearance, forgiveness, tenderness. All these good reports that come from the fruit of the Holy Spirit. If you cultivate presence of the Holy Spirit, if you cultivate relationship with the Holy Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit will begin to bubble out of your life. It is that Spirit that energizes you to now wage a good warfare against the works of darkness and the powers of darkness. If you cannot create 
this environment around you, you cannot afford fighting a good fight of faith. It's not possible. You cannot use a wrong weapon against the enemy. It will produce no result. Love, gentleness, meekness, joy in the Holy Spirit. And for you to cultivate these things, you must begin to distance yourself from the works of the flesh. What is the work of the flesh? Unforgiveness. Offense. Jesus said, offense will surely come. But blessed is he that is not offended of me. If you don't get rid of this rubbish, you are not able to wage a good warfare spiritually. Because the battles we are fighting are not physical battles. They are not natural battles. It's not a battle between you and your wife or your, or your husband or your children. No, 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 no. You are dealing with entities that they don't want you to go anywhere. They don't want you to prosper. They don't want you to enter the place God has told you or prepared for you. So you are the one to decide. You are the one to decide. Hallelujah. You have to decide which battle you are fighting, how to fight the battle, whether you are going to use the promises of God and the things of God to fight, or we are going to use whether you are going to use the natural things of life. Because God has said to us, fight a good fight of what? Faith. He says here, Ephesians chapter 6, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wise of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against the spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to, to withstand in the evil day. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having guarded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, <laughs> with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. And the helmet of salvation. Put on and take the helmet of salvation. And the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Do you see here, the, the scriptures is telling us the things about our war. We fight not against flesh and blood. Remember that. Anytime a battle breaks up, identify who is your real enemy. The person that wants to destroy your finances, destroy your ministry, destroy your job, destroy your marriage, destroy the life of your children. Know that it is not my brother or my sister. You are dealing with the devil. Spiritual hosts of wickedness. You are dealing with witchcraft. You are dealing with sorcery, divination. You are dealing with idolatry from your father's house. Idolatry from your mother's house. Idolatry from the place where you got married. Idolatry of the things you have contacted along your journey of life. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers, spiritual hosts of wickedness. Brother, the Bible calls them host. Mary Magdalene, chief of the prostitute, Jesus cast out of her seven demons. So if you met Mary Magdalene before she met Jesus, you are not dealing with Mary Magdalene. You are dealing with seven demons that have that place as their abode. They have her body as her, their abode. When you are dealing with her, you are not dealing with her, you are dealing with those demons. There are people you meet in life that are demonized. If you engage them without knowledge of Christ, they will finish you. Carabosindus. You meet the man by the graveside at Ganazareth, where Jesus went, the man said 
we are legion. A legion of demons were inside him. Nobody could bind him. When you meet him, you didn't meet the man. You met a legion of demons. There are people you meet, they are demonized. They are oppressed. The enemy have hold on them because their lifestyle is attracting the devil. Any environment you create will attract spiritual forces. If you spend time in prayer and set your mind on the word of God and begin to walk in the works of the spirit and begin to exercise authority by the fruit of the spirit, the devil has no way to touch you. You are protected. He'll be afraid of you. But if your mind is set on the things of this world and your life is a life of the flesh, covetousness, greediness, contention, rivalry, those things that the Lord hates, if you are practicing them, there is no way you can fight a successful fight. You can pray. Some people say, I prayed. If you are prayed, pray according to the rule. Anyone engaged in fight, if he does not fight according to the rules, he is not crowned. You will never obtain victory unless you cleanse your mind and your thought life with the word of God. Unless you allow the standard of your life to be said according to those say it the Lord. For your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. If you are living to fight a fight that you are going to win, you cannot fight with natural things. You cannot fight with physical weapons. The weapons of our warfare, they are not what? Carnal. But they are mighty through God. For the pulling down of every stronghold and everything that will exalt itself against the knowledge of God. So if you want to fight, first of all, cleanse yourself. Deal with yourself first. Because most of the time we are praying, but the person we are praying against is ourselves. That's why sometimes the more we pray, the more trouble. Because if you have not cleansed yourself, you are praying against the nature that you possess. You possess the nature of the devil and you are praying against the devil. So the nature of the devil in you is troubling you. And you think it's the devil, it's not the devil. It's simply that his nature is abiding in you. That's why Jesus said, if my word abide in you and you abide in me, you will ask anything and you will receive the answer. For without me, you can do nothing. So your greatest battle is to present yourself before God, holy and acceptable, which is your reasonable service. The rest, God will fight with you to give you victory. So I want to encourage you, my brother and my sister, fight the good fight of faith. Don't fight with natural weapons. Don't fight with canon weapons. Don't fight like the people in the world. Fight with the nature of God. Fight with the power of God. Fight with the spirit of God. Fight with the word of God. Fight with the things God has provided to you as your weapon. Put on the shield of faith with which you will quench every fiery douse of the devil. Because the devil will continue to throw weapons all over. This person said this, that person said this, that person said this, this person want to steal from you, this person want to take this one from you, this person want to do this. The more you center your mind on those things, that will multiply and increase and overcome you. But when you set your mind on Christ, you are fighting a good fight of faith. When you set your mind on the word of God, you are fighting a good fight of faith. When you set your mind on what is good, what is true, what is virtuous, what is lovely, what is of good report, Oh, you are fighting the good fight of faith. But if you fight with the natural things of this life, like the people of the world, what difference are you to them? Make a difference, and you can. Allow the light of the word of God to shine through you. Jesus said you are the light of the world. Allow that light to shine through you. Allow the power of God to radiate through you. Be an answer to the need of the people of this world. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord, and I trust you. Those that are hearing the sound of my voice, Lord, I love you that you will 
amplify my voice, that you will make it known, that you will reveal that I'm speaking your word and not my word, that I'm here because you sent me. Lord, confirm my words that I've spoken through your word with miracles, signs, and wonder. Let those that hear me, let their life be touched. Let their mind be touched. Father, let, let, let every restriction and every stronghold in their life be broken now. Let it be broken. Every area the devil has invaded their mind, I tear down the works of darkness in their mind. I pull down arguments. I pull down judgments. I pull down contention and rivalry. I destroy those weapons the enemy set up to barricade them and limit them to walking in freedom. I tear it down right now in Jesus' mighty name. I'm excited. The power of God is ready. Wherever you are, remember the telephone line is open. If you call me, I will pray for you because it's part of my assignment. You are part of my assignment. I want to pray for you. I want to help you. God has helped me. <laughs> You look at me, you hear me clearly. God has helped me. Karabo Shantekeboya. Jesus said to Peter, The devil have desired to see you like a wheat, but I have prayed for you. When thou have been strengthened, strengthen thy brethren. You are my assignment to strengthen you. So if you want me to pray for you, pick that phone and call. Right now, the line is open. Call me. Let me pray for you. You're sick in your body. I want God to heal you. Healing is a bread for the children. Say it, the Lord. I want God to deliver you. Because deliverance is of the Lord. I want God to restore you. Because God made a promise. I will restore to you the years. The canker worm has eaten. The caterpillar. The chewing locusts. The crawling locusts. My great army, which I sent for, I will restore back to you. God is a restorer. He can restore back the years the enemy have wasted in a twinkle of an eye. Moses ran away for 40 years. But when the time was full, God sent him back to the place where he ran away. And he was able to lead the children of Israel out of the control of a great army of the day. God can restore you so that through you, your family can be restored. Your brothers and sisters can be restored. Through you, marriages can be restored. God can use you mightily for the salvation of many. But you must take a step of faith. Because faith without works is dead. Faith without works is dead. I believe that I act. Yes, caller? Hello? Yes, how are you? Um, uh, uh, good morning, sir. Can I speak to the bishop, please? You are speaking to the bishop. Bishop, I um, just uh, wanted prayer, please. A prayer request was uh, for restoration. I was planning on getting married next year, but the uh, relationship has collapsed, so I just need God to intervene. Are you born again? Yes, I am born again. You attend the church? I do attend the church, yes. Stretch your hands with me. Let's pray. Okay. Precious Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I agree with your Amen. son. I agree with him right now. Amen. Lord, I'm asking for restoration right now. Amen. We remove every stronghold on your journey. Amen. We destroy every obstacle the enemy has set up for you. Amen. We destroy every cause that is operating Amen. in your life. We Amen. lose you from every entanglement of the wicked one. Amen. We release you right now by favor of God. Amen. And we command the power of God to rest upon you mightily in the name of Jesus. Amen. I release the grace of restoration over you. Amen. I release the peace of restoration over you. Amen. Receive it now in the name of Jesus Christ. I receive, receive it Amen. now in the name of Jesus. I receive it. I destroy every accusation against you. Amen. I destroy every mouth that is speaking against you. I silence them now in the Amen. name of Jesus. Amen. I release angels to assist you in your journey of life. Amen. Receive it now in Jesus' I mighty name. In Jesus, name. in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Take it. Take Amen. it. Amen. Ooh, God bless you, my brother. I will hear your testimony. 
God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. Bye-bye. God bless. Bye-bye. Praise God. So wherever you are, whatever the situation that confronts you, let's pray against it. The Bible says, whatsoever two or three shall agree as concerning anything here on this earth, it will be approved for them in heaven. So God is the one who said we should make that agreement in prayer. And the Lord said that, and you shall decree a thing, and what you decree shall come to pass. I have got grace by God to make decrees, and God have established the ones I have made. Yes, caller. Hello. Hello. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Yes, this is Pastor David. Pastor David of the David's house. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sir, for ministering today. It is well. It is well. We amen. Are... Amen. My prayer is uh, God to, to direct uh, the church and, and to lead his people in the righteous way. Praise God. So yes, I'm going to uh, go ahead. Amen. Amen. That's that's what I was calling. Amen. All right. Stretch your hands with me. Let us agree. I'm going to use you. The prayer will not be for you alone, but many churches, yes, many churches exactly. that need that restoration and that direction. Now we are going to pray. Father, I agree with your servant, David. I pray for his church and his family. Lord, that you give them a clear direction in their work with you and the ministry and the church you have given them. And you will remove every obstacle that is standing in their way in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I also use this opportunity to pray for the churches, those that are confused, those that don't know how to respond back to the things that God is asking them to do. We destroy the yoke of confusion and we remove out of the way every stumbling block, every hindrance in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we thank you, Lord, for clarity. Mm. Speak to your son. Give him a clear direction. Give Amen. him a clear direction. Let him receive a Amen. clear instruction on how to walk Amen. and how to follow you. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you, servant of God. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Wherever you are, Pick your phone and call. I want to pray for you. I still have time left to pray for you, to encourage you, to agree with you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Faith without works is dead. If you believe in the message you have received from me, preaching, teaching, and you want God to help you, pick that phone and call. Let us agree. Let's pray together. It is God that commanded us to pray. Yes, caller. Hello. Hello, caller. Hello. All right. If your phone is cut off, try call back again. I'm still here, live. Praise God. So wherever you are, you want me to minister to you, to pray for you, because I'm only doing what God commanded me to do. He said, if there's anyone among you that is sick, let him call for the elders of the church and let them pray. The fervent, righteous prayers of the righteous are much. When we pray, God will use our prayer as an invitation to walk on your behalf. Prayer is invitation to God, petition to God, letter to God, appeal to God. Prayer is sitting before you. Yes, caller. Hello. Hi, can I speak to Bishop? You are speaking to Bishop. Hello. Yeah, can I speak to Bishop? You are speaking to Bishop. Yes, you are speaking to him. Bishop, how are you doing, sir? We are thankful, thankful. That sounds like a familiar voice. <laughs> <laughs> I want to encourage you for what you're doing. It is fantastic. That's the Archbishop, our own Archbishop. The, the one without without you, I wouldn't have been an Archbishop. <laughs> we thank the Lord for the grace on your life and your faithfulness to God. We thank God. God bless you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. 
Thank you. Wherever you are, we still have time left. You want us to encourage you and be a help to you. Pick that phone and call. Don't let the moment pass you by. Don't let the moment. I love the woman with the issue of blood. She said, if only I can touch the hem of his garment. If only I can touch. Yes, caller. Hello, caller. Hello. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Hello, good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm fine. Uh, my name is uh, Mr. Zek from Aya, and I'm calling from uh, Spain. Z I want the prophet to pray for me. Brother. For restoration and uh, evil dreams. I dream dreams uh, that I don't like. Are you born again, Zephaniah? Yes, I am. I am. I am. I am. Okay, stretch your hands to me. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I agree with your son, Zephaniah. I come against every weapon the devil is using to oppress you Amen. and to afflict you. Amen. I come against it Amen. now in the name of Amen. Jesus. Yes, amen. I disconnect your life right now. I disconnect your destiny from the control of the amen. evil one. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I release the fresh oil of the Lord upon you. Amen. Receive the fresh anointing. Amen. I silence your accusers right now. Amen. I destroy the assignment against you right now. Amen. I declare you set free now in the name of Jesus. Amen. It is well with you. The Lord bless you and keep you in Amen. Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Woo! Glory to God. Where, wherever you are, I'm, thank you. Thank you, my brother. Thank you so much. Wherever you are, our time is running out. But I want you to pick that phone. That is a phone on that. 0208 Pick that phone because that phone goes straight to my desk. As I go out on this television now, I'm going back to my office, I will be sitting down. If you call me on that number, I will answer you. I will pray for you. Whatever you want God to do for you, I will agree with you. If I am not there, leave a message and your number. I will call you back when I'm sitting on that desk. Because my time on the studio is running out right now. And because it's running out, I can do more, less. Father, bless your children as they hear your word. Let your glory and your power cover them. Let the blood of Jesus cover them. Give them the victory they need in Jesus' name. Amen. Jehovah Nisi, let your name be glorified. Jehovah Yahweh, let your name be glorified. 